Hi there, Critics for Creation here. Now, I was planning to do a video on the Old Testament, and I still plan to do that. But in the meantime, I came across this particular gem and was utterly astounded at the errors that were put forward in what can only be described as a truly pathetic attempt to disprove evolution. Like I've said before, and I will say it again, if you have genuine evidence that disproves evolution, come forward with it and be known around the world, because that is what science would do if anyone was able to debunk it. There seems to be this myth that they brush everything that doesn't neatly fit in uh, with our current knowledge under the rug. This couldn't be more from the truth. By its very nature, science is self-correcting, incorporating new evidence into its theories and changing them to accommodate new evidence if necessary. It's not a conspiracy and it's not a co closed society. Now, this video is a lot longer than my usual ones and while I was tempted to break it into two, you can tell that uh, by my voice that I'm actually coming down with a cold and I wanted to get it all finished before I lost the power of speech completely. So please do bear with me with me and on with the video. Hello and welcome to my channel Bible Flockbox. In this video I'm going to be talking about 10 facts that evolutionists don't want you to know. I love the title. Talk about clickbait. 10 facts. Bear in mind we are being promised facts here. A full 10 of them that evolutionists, which is not really a sufficient term as people who believe, for want of a better term, in evolution are not organised into groups like religion. People generally just do it because they understand the evidence. That you are proposing that everyone who believes in evolution are aware of the facts that we don't want creationists to know is a very bold statement. And it would be a real shame if I was to ask for some actual evidence to back it up. Fact number one. The Big Bang Theory is one of the most ridiculously impractical theories for the origin of the universe. Wrong! Firstly, this is not a fact, it's your opinion, and while I do get the feeling I'll be saying this a lot during this video, facts are not opinions. Secondly, the Big Bang is not linked to evolution, unless you're talking about cosmological evolution, which you didn't really specify. Basically, the Big Bang Theory teaches that a large quantity of nothing decided to pack together tightly and explode outward in order to create stars and heavier elements through more solar combustions. What makes this theory so impractical is, first of all, nothing can't explode. I Wrong again, it wasn't nothing, at least not in the way you are referring to it as. It didn't explode, it expanded, and the way you explain this makes it sound like you believe that the universe planned this with an end result, which is certainly not the case. Look, if you don't understand the Big Bang, that's fine. It's extremely complicated, but don't try and disprove it because you don't understand it. I mean. When was the last time you blew up nothing? This should just go without saying. Next, explosions don't produce organization. They do the opposite. They cause destruction. Think about it. It's like saying you could throw a bomb into a junkyard and get a Mercedes dealership. It's impossible. Nothing annoys me more than the words, this should go without saying, because you are shutting down an argument before the other party has time to respond and debunk your fallacy. No one is suggesting that nothing exploded. You are presenting the ultimate straw man argument here. Show me an astrophysicist who says that the Big Bang was an explosion of nothing that instantly created everything, and I will show you a liar. The bomb in the junkyard is just a reword in the old tornado building a 747 fallacy. Of course, it is impossible, but no one's suggesting this to be the case. Life started out very small and simple, not the extremely complicated multicellular organisms we see today. Again, this has actually nothing to do with evolution. It just can't happen. Fact number two, the fossil record does not support the theory of evolution. Oh, please tell me you are joking. The fossil record proves beyond any reasonable doubt that evolution is true. I really hope that you have some solid evidence to back this up, otherwise I'm going to call you out as a liar and a charlatan. This is because no actual complete skeletal missing links have been found. Missing links are remains that prove one species have crossed over to another, like a half man, half monkey. Whoa there, sailor, I'm going to have to stop you as you're demonstrating your utter lack of knowledge. Firstly, we have skeletons, and while they no may not be 100% complete, we have enough parts of them to make reasonable scientific conclusions. 
Adi and Lucy both demonstrate that they walked upright, for example. It's not like we simply find a single finger and make drastic and sweeping conclusions from there. Also, this idea that one species crosses over to another is simply wrong. You make it sound like one day an ancient common ancestor just started giving birth to modern man. No, some of those common ancestors evolved into common man. Your wording is so casual here that it not only demonstrates your ignorance in regards to evolution, but it also makes it quite hard to be specific in what you mean. Asking when we identify Homo sapiens is a valid question. Asking whether half monkey, half man isn't. Evolution teaches that, through natural selection and mutations, it took man approximately 6 million years to evolve. That means, during that whole time, species of animals were changing from one to another and progressing towards manhood. Yet, there is not one complete set of skeletal remains that prove this. Yes, there is. There is literally tons of evidence in regards to this. Also, not all species were or are evolving towards modern humans. You make it sound like it's a race or a predetermined plan, which is so wrong. Look, the evolution of man is an extremely slow process, and we have skeletal remains to demonstrate these changes. We don't have every single skeleton from every single creature, because that would be impossible. Fossils are only formed under certain criteria, and many of those that died would have done so in places where the conditions were not met. This doesn't mean we cannot understand the progression. There should be literally millions of complete skeletal remains of transitional types of species if evolution did, in fact, take that long to occur. But what do we have instead? Some skulls and teeth and other small fragments of bone, which really prove nothing. Because if you don't have the complete skeleton from where the remains came from, you can't prove they are transitional fossils. Can't you? You're saying that without a perfect skeleton, at each and every stage of development, there is no way that evolution can be true. The skulls alone show the evolution, and yes, it takes more than just a skull to get a full picture of the entire species, but we are still able to determine some features, and as we find more evidence, we fill in any gaps. Also, just because science may be missing knowledge in certain areas, it doesn't mean you can just shout that the theory is wrong and it must be God instead. Science accepts the gaps in its knowledge and it works to close them. Simply claiming those remains came from a transitional type of species is not enough proof. Not to mention, some of those transitional fragments have turned out to be complete hoaxes. Take Piltdown Man, for example. In 1912, Parts of a jaw and skull were found in England and called Piltdown Man. Evolutionists used these remains to claim they had clear evidence that man descended from ape-like creatures. However, in 1953, it was proven to be a total forgery. Laboratory tests confirmed that the bones were rather recent, not ancient, and that they had been stained with bichromate to make them look old. Also, the canine tooth of the skull was found to have been filed and stained. This isn't the only hoax like this. I'll include a link in the description box to a book entitled Evolution Cruncher, which goes into more detail about this and thousands of other scientific facts that discredit the theory of evolution. Yes, Piltdown Man was a hoax. People are assholes. Get used to it. However, you can't use hoaxes that people created to get money off fame to disprove evolution, the same way that I cannot use the multitude of faith healers and religious persons who claim that God gave them powers to disprove all of religion. All I can do is disprove that individual's specific claims. So yes, Piltdown Man was a hoax and it was disproved. Now go on and do that with every piece of evidence to support evolution and we will talk. Fact number three, dinosaurs did not go extinct 65 million years ago. In 2005, paleontologist Mary Schweitzer discovered blood vessels in the thigh bone of a Tyrannosaurus rex, which supposedly went extinct 68 million years ago. They did go extinct approximately 68 million years ago. The Schweitzer discovery you are talking about is commonly held up as an example of young earth creationism and it's always the same mistakes that are made. A tiny amount of tissue was preserved but by the iron nearby which acted like formaldehyde. This is the exception rather than the rule and scientifically it's really exciting as it means in the future we might be able to find more preserved tissues. However, this doesn't prove that they died at any other time than the 
one being presented. And until you come up with actual evidence to so why this is the case, get it peer-reviewed and published, I'm going to keep coming back at your pseudoscience bollocks. But, according to the theory of evolution, this is impossible because traditional ideas of how fossils form do not allow for the preservation of soft, perishable, organic tissues. Not to mention, the thigh bone itself was relatively unfossilized. This points to a young age for the remains of the dinosaur bones, roughly about 4,300 years, corresponding with the time of the biblical flood. I would love to know where you've got that figure of 4,300 years, because to me it sounds like you've just pulled it out with your rectum for the sole purpose of justifying your belief in the biblical flood story. I've already explained about the Schweitzer thing, so I don't want to go over it again, other than to say it also doesn't explain uh, why we wouldn't be finding ancient Egyptians and Romans perfectly preserved all the time if we applied your logic. Not only did dinosaurs not go extinct 65 million years ago, there still may be some around today. Bollocks. This is utter, complete bollocks. And I'm sorry. Now, I've seen the rest of this video, so I know what's coming. But for any skeptic watching, I would advise you to go and get a drink of significant alcoholic content. Over the past century, there have been a few instances where what looked like dinosaur carcasses have been discovered. The two images that you see here are of two possible plesiosaurs. The one on the left, washed ashore in Monterey Bay, California in 1925, it had a 20 foot long neck and some witnesses described a number of legs on the creature. Over the last century there have been sightings of angels and werewolves and vampires and Bigfoots and aliens, but no one simply accepts these as the truth. Evidence is needed. Now, I went and did some reading up about this, and I couldn't find anything that supports this. Yes, it's plastered across cryptozoology sites, and it's commonly used as proof that dinosaurs didn't die out 65 million years ago. But there's no records of it being analysed by anything close to an expert or anything like that. Not that I could find, anyway. If anybody can find anything, please send it to me. You point out that some eyewitnesses reported certain aspects about it, which implies that others did not, and instantly demonstrates the unreliability of eyewitness accounts and why they didn't class as evidence. Also, you're quick to point out that the one falsified fossils is enough to disprove evolution, but seems to be utterly accepted as this as an accurate truth. The image on the right is of a creature that was caught off the coast of New Zealand in 1977 by a Japanese fishing boat. It was 32 feet long and weighed 2 tons. No, it wasn't. Either you haven't actually chosen to look up anything in any way or form, in which case, why should I believe anything you say? Or you have, and are lying, in which case, why should I believe you, you desperate charlatan? This is a corpse of a basket shark. Yes, it was a big basket shark, but analysis demonstrated it was a basket shark. Fact number four, evolution has occult roots. Okay, I'm going to need some proof of that statement. But let's just assume that it did start out from the occult, although I'm not sure how you are connecting the two for this scenario, but let's just assume what you said is true. Does that make the entire theory untrue? Is the whole truth dependent on the basis or root of the first hypothesis? Because I would strongly argue against that. It doesn't matter even if evolution was rooted in the occult, it no longer is, and the vast amount of evidence that has been gathered and examined and cross-examined, it's proven it to be true. Many people don't realize this, but Charles Darwin was not the inventor of evolution. He just made it popular. The fact of the matter is, evolution has much older occultic roots. Evolution wasn't invented the same way that no one invented gravity. It was discovered, and most scholars will admit that Darwin was pivotal towards his acceptance as the prevailing theory to explain differences between species. But also individuals such as Alfred Russell Wallace were critical to its development. Again, it doesn't really matter who invented it, as you say, but the fact that it has now been proven beyond doubt to be the case even if it was Darwin uh, who had merely suggested it as a hypothesis with no evidence, this wouldn't change the results we've been able to formulate today. Thousands of years before Darwin, people in shamanic cultures believed that humans and animals were related. 
I'm not an expert on shamanism, but it was my understanding that one of the most prevalent beliefs was that all animals are linked via spirits, not a physical relationship or commonality that evolution proposes. Please, if I misunderstand this, please do contact me, and likewise let me know if anyone has any good resources in regards to shamanism. Evolution is also at the core of the Hindu and witchcraft belief system. In addition, ancient Greek philosophers spoke about evolutionary concepts. Thales of Miletus asserted that all things originated from water, and Anaximander suggested that men originated from animals of another sort. The theory of evolution can also be compared to the New Age movement and Freemasonry. The New Age movement teaches that humanity is evolving to a cosmic consciousness which will enable us to attain to the godhood within us. Freemasonry teaches that through a progression or evolution of degrees, one may become God. Of course, this lie comes straight from Satan when he told Eve in Genesis chapter 3 verse 4, Ye shall be as gods. Always time to persecute some witches. Uh, look, I'm not going to refute all these viewpoints because it's re it's not really relative to the argument as a whole. Just because someone at some point said something without backing it up doesn't invalidate everything else since. Fact number five. Evolution is impossible because of irreducible complexity. Irreducible complexity means that certain biological systems are too complex to have evolved from simpler or less complete predecessors through natural selection or chance mutations. There is an entire series of videos which go into detail about this subject called Incredible Creatures That Defy Evolution. Wow, if anyone wants to look up something to demonstrate how to write a heavily biased pseudo-scientific article, then look no further. Just because someone approaches something from a certain point of view, such as creationism, shouldn't be a problem if they are intellectually honest and follow the evidence where it goes. This is not the case here. This series cherry picks some extreme example, glosses over the actual science in favour of pretending that we can't understand it, and then uses that to disprove evolution. Evidence cannot be examined in a vacuum as it is done here. You can even find clips of those videos on YouTube. And they have a webpage on BibleProbe.com. They talk about animals that could not have evolved because they are too complex. One example is the bombardier beetle. The following quotes are from their webpage. The bombardier beetle defends itself by mixing chemicals that explode, firing through twin tail tubes that can swivel like gun turrets. The bubbling liquid that shoots out at 212 degrees Fahrenheit is enough to deter most predators. The force of the round fired should be enough to blast a little beetle into orbit, if not pieces, and it would be if it was discharged at one time. Slow motion photography has revealed that the crafty beetle actually lets go with a stream of up to 1,000 little explosions. Together they are enough to put off would-be attackers while leaving the small defender with its feet still on the ground. There is simply no way the bombardier beetle could have evolved its sophisticated defense system over time, adding swiveling gun barrels or its repeater firing mechanism at different stages. It needed them all in one package, at the same time. A beetle that blew itself up would not be around to develop a more refined firing system. A beetle that could not keep the enemy in firing rage would not survive to work on more maneuverable firepower. There's simply no way a slow, gradual process will produce this beetle. This is one example of many given by incredible creatures that defy evolution. Others include the giraffe, woodpecker, and even the chicken egg. If you would like more information on those or other animals that could not have possibly evolved, click on the link to the incredible creatures that defy evolution that I have left in the description box or look up incredible creatures that defy evolution on YouTube. You can look at the links if you want, but there are quicker and more effective ways to destroy your brain cells. I'm not going to deny the amazing creatures that evolution has produced, but just because you cannot understand or comprehend that process, it doesn't negate it. The mechanism the bombardier uses to deter predators did not simply evolve overnight, but gradually through minor changes and mutations that saw those of the species that were best suited to their environment breed with similar ones and produce offspring that continued to thrive while those that didn't thrive were either killed or failed to mate. 
over time these separate functions evolved together they were not designed nor did they have an end result to achieve we don't know how many species of beetle are now extinct because they didn't have sufficient abilities to survive fact number six evolution is impossible because of the dna species barrier dna doesn't allow one species to evolve into another one in other words there is no way no matter how hard you try, that you can produce a cat from mating different breeds of dogs over time. Are you serious? This? This is your argument? No, you cannot produce a cat from breeding two dogs. No one suggests that you can, or that is how evolution works. When you say that evolution doesn't allow you to change into a new species, it just demonstrates your utter lack of understanding of the process. A species mutates in some way and may thrive because of it. That is the species now. There will be minor DNA changes, but that doesn't make it a completely new species. It's a biological impossibility. DNA has a species barrier, which prohibits one species of animal or plant from crossing over into another one. The best that can be accomplished is the creation of different breeds within a species. Take the American English Coon Hound, for example. It's a 1905 breed of dog developed from Virginia Hounds, which were developed over time from dogs imported to the United States. But it's still just a dog, even though it's a relatively new breed. Also, if you look at different animals and plants in the world, they are relatively easy to distinguish. It's not hard to see that a fish, dog, cat, monkey, and human being are all different species. Yet, if evolution really went on for 6 million years, like evolutionists claim, and throughout that entire time, fish evolved into land animals and land animals evolved into other land animals and human beings, there shouldn't be such a clear distinction between species. We should have all kinds of transitional types of life forms around us right now, but they don't exist, which means that evolution never happened. Fact no, it doesn't work anything like that. Look, you throw around the word species without really explaining what you mean by it, and it only serves to muddy the water, which I guess is to give you the argument weight, because otherwise it's totally false. Not everything evolves into humans, which is what you seem to be suggesting. You use the dog as an example, somehow expecting the fact that it didn't turn into some other animal as proof that evolution is false. But if you breed a dog with a dog, you'll only ever get a dog. If you continue to breed dogs of the same species in an isolated environment, then eventually, given millions of years, it is possible that these dogs would have changed significantly from their forebearers and other dogs in different environments. Look at the feline genus, for example. No one can really argue that house cats are the same as lions, who are the same as tigers, and so forth. They all come from a common ancestor that branched off much later than other species and evolved separately. And there are hundreds of hybrid animals bred from different species in the same or similar genus. Look at things like zebroids or felid hybrids. Finally, there's also the question raised about what uh, when you define a species as new, using dogs for example, at what point would you say that a Great Dane is a different species from a terrier for example? You make these assumptions using very imprecise language to poorly explain what you try to mean and provide no support and evidence. Overall the water is just very very murky and none of it makes much sense. Fact number seven, written records don't support the theory of evolution. The last stage of evolution is said to have occurred around 80,000 years ago. That's when Neanderthal man became human. Wrong again. Neanderthal man didn't suddenly become modern human. Their lineage split off about 600,000 years ago, and they died out approximately 40,000 years ago, so I have no idea where you got this idea that they suddenly became modern humans approximately 80,000 years ago. Also, Evolution didn't have its last stage. Again, this assumes that it has an end goal that it's constantly striving towards. And finally, just because ancient texts don't support something doesn't mean that it is or isn't true. Ancient texts do support the Earth moving around the Sun and being flat, which we all know is a lie. Yet, written records of mankind go back only 5,000 years. The oldest written record found to date is the Kish tablet from the ancient Sumerian city of Kish. Do you mean to tell me that man has been in the same stage of development and intellect for 80,000 years and it took him 75,000 years to learn how to write? Something doesn't add up here. 
Yes, your basic knowledge of science. That's what doesn't add up. Ignoring your dates again, I would put forward the idea that cave paintings dating back to approximately 40,000 years ago were the first attempt at written communication. And while I do agree that there is no language until much later, or at least written language, your assumption is that when we begin to define Homo sapiens as a species, then suddenly they should have had writing, architecture, maths, and so on and so forth. Man didn't start storing corn until approximately 10,000 years ago. So are you suggesting that before that there wasn't corn, or man didn't eat, or man didn't eat corn at all? Of course not. To do so would be ridiculous and a straw man. But again, you are just making sweeping, incorrect statements. However, if we were created by the God of Heaven around 6,000 years ago, like the Bible claims, that would make more sense. Makes sense to who? It might seem to make sense to you, but I would wager that it's because you desperately want to believe it. But to people who understand science, it not only doesn't make sense, but it's provably wrong. Fact number eight, evolution is a religious belief. Oh, come on, you've, you've got to, you've got to be kidding me here. Evolution is just as much, if not more so, of a religious belief than Christianity and biblical creation. The okay, for this I had to pin down a definition of what religion actually is, and it's quite hard to get a solid answer, even from legal sources, so I went for one which I think encompasses all religions quite well, but if anyone is unhappy with it, or has a better one, please let me know. And for the sake of this example, I will stick with this one and just use the first two points, just because the video is running quite long anyway. So the first point is, it needs a god or a group of gods. So, evolution is not religion because it requires neither of those. And the second point is, it needs an organized system of beliefs, ceremonies, and rules to worship the god or gods. Again, evolution doesn't fulfill any of the, these criteria. So, by that definition alone, evolution is not religion, and I have no idea why you require more faith in something that can be demonstrated than something that cannot be demonstrated, such as most religions. The reason being is because it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does biblical creation. For those that believe in biblical creation, at least we have a written record that states God revealed the act of creation to Moses. In other words, we have the testimony of someone that was actually there, God. And I have a written record about how a boy named Harry Potter resisted the would-be tyrant Lord Voldemort. Doesn't make it bloody true now, does it? You have utterly no proof that the Bible is true, and a lot of creationism boils down to this. The Bible is utterly true because the Bible says it is utterly true. Well, people lie. There you go, and I'm pretty confident that people have always lied, and probably always will lie, and your holy book is no damn different. For the theory of evolution, there was no one there to observe the origins of the universe, so it's all guesswork. But we can observe its effects. Although the origins of the universe has no real implications on evolution, I'm going to point out that there are many ways you can understand something without actually witnessing it. I've never seen, for example, with my naked eyes, a germ, but through science I understand them and how they work. We haven't seen the vast majority of evolution, but we have got the fossils to prove it. Also, an experiment with nylon-eating bacteria was w a witness case of evolution, so we've actually witnessed it in a way you can understand. Not to mention, the belief in creation is just more logical than evolution. For example, doesn't it make more sense to believe that all of this life on Earth, full of complexity and design, was created by an intelligent designer like God? No, no it doesn't. And if we were designed by anyone or anything, they were bloody terrible at doing it. We might be an intelligent species, but we have a variety of health problems and issue. Our design is far from perfect. I mean, seriously, who would design a life form that eats and breathes through the same area? We have productive organs near our waste disposal organs which is extremely unhygienic and our history and path is littered with the billions of life forms who died through war, poverty, disease and hardship. Any designer's competence really needs to be brought into question. Evolutionists, however, will not admit that their belief is a religion. Why? My opinion is because it would violate the First Amendment of the Constitution, which prohibits the government from supporting any one religion, and evolution is taught in public schools in the United States. Therefore, just like public schools are forbidden from leading students in prayer because prayer is a religious matter, they would also be forbidden from teaching evolution. 
fair. And the rest of the world just fell in line. I'm British, so why would it affect my rights under an American constitution? Besides, I've already demonstrated why it's not religion, but I suppose it's always more fun to have some overarching governmental conspiracy behind everything. Fact number nine, evolution teaches immoral behavior. Since evolution teaches survival of the fittest and that we were not created by God, that means that we are not subject to God's laws. No one is subject to God's laws. If you commit a crime that is supposedly against the Ten Commandments, then God doesn't instantly strike you down. All persons are under the laws of the state and society they reside in. Even if those laws are based on religion, then I would still argue that the person is not under God's laws. Or any other laws, for that matter. Instead, it's only the strong that survive by any means necessary. You make it sound like evolution encourages members of the species to get together and fight to the death to determine who is the best suited to mate. Those most apt in their environment survive and go on to mate, while those that are unable to do, die out. Birds that are better at getting food, or rodents who are better at avoiding predators, will be more successful at surviving, meaning their offspring will also be more successful at surviving, and those that aren't will die out for whatever reason. Yes, this does mean that a lot of species went extinct, but just because something isn't nice doesn't make it any less true. Darwin also taught racism. He claimed that some races were more evolved than others and therefore more intelligent. And this line of reasoning has led to some devastating consequences throughout history. Darwinian evolution was the driving force which led Hitler to first sterilize and then exterminate mentally and physically handicapped individuals in Germany in his eugenics program in 1939. It was actually called the Acteon T4 program. It authorized specific doctors and officials to carry out mercy deaths, euthanasia, of those the state deemed unworthy of life. Hitler considered them to be useless eaters. Over 70,000 people were murdered, including children, and the technology used to kill them was transferred over to the killing of the Jews in concentration camps during the Holocaust. Hitler was motivated by Darwin's views on racism and survival of the fittest to exterminate the Jews. He believed that by doing so, he would advance the human race in the cause of evolution. Six million Jews lost their lives, half of which died in horrifying concentration camps. That's not evolution, that's social Darwinism. Social Darwinism is when someone takes the principles of evolution and survival of the fittest or most apt and attempts to implement them on a society for whatever reasons. This plea to emotion, and don't get me wrong, what was done in Nazi Germany was horrific, is not directly linked to evolution. It's people taking a concept, idea or ideology and twisting it to fit to their own ends. The same way that many terrorist organisations use religions to wage war. <laughs> wage wars even, and so forth. Another famous individual, Jeffrey Dahmer, the American serial killer, which murdered at least 17 people between 1978 and 1991, blamed Darwinian evolution for his actions. He stated in an interview on MSNBC that evolution cheapens life and leaves you accountable to no one. He also went on to say that he had accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior after his father sent him some literature about creationism, which exposed the lies of evolution. On November the 28th, 1994, Jeffrey Dahmer was beaten to death in prison. So much wrong with this statement. Firstly, Jeffrey Dahmer was diagnosed with several serious mental illnesses which I would wager were much more important than anything he read on evolution. What he did to the corpses only goes to further that assessment. I'm not sure what the actions or words of a mentally ill mass murderer has to do with the truth about evolution. Even if it was true that evolution cheapened life, that wouldn't be enough to make it false. Bad things happen all the time, but we don't pretend they didn't exist because accepting the truth is painful. The fact that he converted to creationism doesn't really prove anything either, other than perhaps he was easily swayed due to mental illness. Nor does the fact he was beaten to death in prison, unless this is a very, very poor attempt to plead to emotion. But I don't think many people will be overly distraught that a mass murder was killed behind bars. Not that I'm saying it's okay, of course, just that it's not going to shake the foundations of our society. Fact number 10. The theory of evolution is not a fact. 
Sometimes when I read comments on websites about the theory of evolution, I find adamant evolutionists stating evolution is a fact. If it's a fact, then it wouldn't be called a theory. The theory of evolution. I hear this so much and it's absolutely painful. Firstly, it's not even an argument against evolution, it's an argument against wording. If it was called the highly unlikely and surprising thing called evolution, it wouldn't, based on all the evidence we have, change the actual results. When used in the world of science, a theory is something that has been acquired by the scientific method, repeatedly tested and confirmed and can be used to accurately predict results. This is exactly what evolution does. You're getting the word confused with hypothesis and if you had any scientific knowledge, you would understand this, but I'm guessing that just because science is hard, you decided it was easier to pretend it didn't exist. Which is basically a set of ideas used to explain how life could have come into existence through time, natural processes, and genetic mutations. This is not a fact, because no one was there to observe it, and no one can prove it beyond the shadow of a doubt. If it was a fact, it would be called the fact of evolution. Right, I've called it a fact. It's the fact of evolution. Now, disprove me somehow. See, the wording doesn't make a difference, and your so-called argument about observation is incorrect again. Using the idea that unless you can see something directly, you cannot come to a conclusion about it is just false. Not the theory of evolution. Not to mention, once analyzed by any thinking Christian, it becomes apparent that the theory of evolution is simply an attempt to explain away the existence of God so that people who don't want to submit to the authority of God in their lives could have some justification for not doing so. Do you realize how many scientists that work on evolution are Christians? Mary Schweitzer, who you used as an example earlier, is a Christian who says she doesn't believe in young earth creationism or the biblical flood because there is no evidence to support it. You make it sound like only Christians can examine the evidence of evolution and not accept it. I would be more inclined to say that Christians who examine the evidence for evolution and don't accept it do not so because it conflicts with their predetermined beliefs based off religious text. Evolution is open to challenge. If you are able to conclusively disprove evolution, you will be famous. As of yet, no one has been able to do that, and that in itself should tell you something. But you can't get away from God, one way or another, you're going to have to face him. Okay, so I cut short the end of the video because all he does is go on to recite some scripture to prove that God is real and we have to face God because the Bible says so. Wow, that was one video that totally blew my mind and not in a way that I now feel awakened, but in one that I feel drinking rum every day for the rest of my life couldn't possibly destroy any more brain cells than that nonsense just did. He promised me 10 facts that evolutionists didn't want people to know. I don't think he gave me any facts whatsoever. He gave me a lot of misinformation, but it didn't back up with anything. It mentioned in passing some of the common arguments that theists use, but the way it presented them makes me think that the uh, creator didn't even understand these fully. I don't know whether to be amused or genuinely pressed that this is what constitutes an argument. Either way, I had to go and get some room after I watched it. This is an F from me for utter, abject, total, uncompromising and painful failure. Perhaps the most unconvincing, error riddled and ridiculous video I have ever seen in favour of creationism and I watch stuff that Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis make. Please don't make any more videos, at least don't make them without consulting some damn science books first. For those that have stuck me, with me throughout the entire video, thank you and apologies for my voice becoming more hoarse as I went on. As always, if you liked my video, give me a thumbs up and a cheeky share. If you have any questions about this or any other matter, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm also on Facebook now, so if you search for Critic of Creation there, you should be able to find me and give me a poke. Until next time.